London is a city of extremes. Over 9 million people, one of the world's leading financial capitals and a transport system that is both iconic and confusing. Although the situation is similar in Paris, London has not that one distinct central station as in many other European cities like Berlin or Rome for example. Instead it has 14, yes 14 separate terminal stations. Each one handling its own set of trains scattered like spokes around the center. This unusual arrangement begs the question, why does London have so many separate railway termini and what does that mean for this megacity today? Let's find out. The story begins in the mid 1800s, when Britain was at the forefront of the railway revolution. Railways were not planned by the state, but created by competing private companies. Each company wanted to reach London, but also to dominate the arrival point. The result? Every company built its own line and at the end of it, its own station. That's how Paddington became the grand entrance of the Great Western Railway, Houston the showpiece of the London and North Western Railway and King's Cross the proud terminus of the Great Northern. There was no incentive to share and no authority to enforce coordination. London was left with a patchwork of termini, rather than one unified hub. Even after the network matured, connecting the stations into a through system was nearly impossible. London's geography posed two major challenges. First, the River Thames, slicing the city in two. It made building heavy rail bridges or tunnels a huge financial and technical challenge in the 19th century. Second, the dense urban core. By the time planners considered connecting stations, central London was already tightly packed with housing, businesses and infrastructure. Pushing new railway corridors through the heart of the city would have meant mass demolition on a scale the city never accepted. Together, these obstacles froze the fragmented system in place. There is also a political dimension. France railway for example were heavily shaped by state planning, leading to Paris dominant Gare du Nord and its through lines. In Germany the Prussian state orchestrated major rail hubs that eventually became Berlin's Hauptbahnhof. Britain took the opposite approach. With little state control each company pursued profits in isolation. By the time the government began taking a stronger role in the 20th century, London's web of stations was already entrenched. Instead of replacing them, planners had to work around them. Since the termini couldn't realistically be joined, London invented another solution, the underground. When the first tube line opened in 1863, its main purpose was to connect isolated mainline stations. Over time, the underground grew into a vast network that links nearly every terminus to every other one. Today, King's Cross St. Pancras is a colossal interchange, serving multiple underground lines as well as Eurostar services. Paddington, Victoria, Liverpool Street are all deeply integrated with the tube. And with the recent Elizabeth Line, London finally has a modern east-west cross city railway that touches several termini, effectively acting as a substitute for the through station the city never had. Still, the system has drawbacks. Travelers who arrive at Houston but want to continue south to Waterloo must change stations, often carrying luggage through the underground. International visitors quickly notice how fragmented the system feels compared with Paris or Berlin. For commuters it means heavy dependence on the tube just to complete journeys between rail lines that in most cities would meet at one central hub. In short, what worked in the 19th century remains a daily logistical puzzle in the 21st. 
London's 14 termini form one of the busiest urban rail systems on earth. Some are giants. Waterloo was for many years the busiest station in Europe. St. Pancras International is the gateway to Paris and Brussels. Others are small but vital, like the Fenchurch Street, which funnels commuters into the city despite being one of the smallest terminals. Together, these stations handle hundreds of thousands of passengers every single day, and each has its own character and history. So why does London have so many terminal stations? Because history, competition, geography and politics locked the system into place before anyone could build a central hub. Instead of replacing them, London adapted with the underground and later with projects like the Elizabeth Line. For travelers, this means inconvenience and complexity. For railway fans, it means unparalleled variety and one of the most fascinating railway landscapes in the world. In its own way, London proves that even chaos can become a kind of order and that a city doesn't always need one grand station to be one of the greatest railway capitals on earth.